Oh, we got a big, 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 big day of polar graphs here today. So hunker down, get that graph paper ready, and we're really going to go to town on graphing some polar functions here today. And my big point of emphasis is I want to draw a correlation between our rectangular graphs of y equals the sine of x versus his polar counterpart, r equals the sine of theta. Now, these equations definitely are not equivalent. Uh, they're just in two totally different languages, of course. But I'm going to show you how we can draw a correlation and how, because we're going to start with the rectangular graph, something we're very comfortable with, and then we're going to use that to build our polar graph. Um, number one, we're not going to be using any calculators for any of these graphs. That's a big, big no-no. They've never had any of those on the AP exam. And the other one is I don't want to waste all that time constructing a table of values. I just think that's too time consuming. Consuming. Um, now, the method I introduced today may feel sort of time consuming, but I think once we become, you know, rather competent with it and comfortable with it, it'll, um, I think it's the quickest way when we get to that big exam. Now, as far as that sine curve, here's what we know. It know we know it goes through these special points right here. Um, I'll draw the best curve I can. Okay. And I'm going to show you how we can translate those values over onto the polar graph. Now, what's kind of weird here is the y values on my polar graphs correspond to the r values on, or did I say that right? I, the y values on my rectangular graph correspond to the r values on my polar graph, and then vice versa, the x's correspond to the thetas in kind of a weird turn of events. So, for instance, let's start with this point right here. Okay, so that would be the ordered pair 0, comma 0, of course, which means, um, let's see, now the x value is now my theta, and the y value is now my r when I go to the polar. So 0, 0 is kind of easy. That just means it's at what's called the pole. It used to be called the origin on the rectangular graph. Now it's called the pole. My next point here is, let's try this one. That would be considered pi over 2, comma 1. So 1 is your r value, and pi over 2 is your... Um, theta. Now what I'm going to do here guys is let's say this every two circles is equal to one unit. Let's say two circles equals one unit. So I'm going to say right there is a radius of one. Uh, this would be a radius of two up there. So there's my radius of one. And, um, let's see. And then pi comma zero. So I got a radius of zero in the pi direction um, would put me right back to where I started. So Maybe that doesn't help you a whole lot. We plotted three points. Two of them happen to be at the same location. You know, what really happens in between those two dots? So we're going to introduce a few more points here. Here's one of my favorite points. Uh, that's going to be pi over 6, comma, 1 half. So what I'm going to do is I've got an r value of 1 half, and I'm going to go in the pi over 6 direction, which is right there. One of my other favorite points is right around here. That's called 5 pi over 6, comma, 1 half. All right. Just a cousin to the, the first quadrant, pi over 6 version. So I'm going to go 1 half r in the 5 pi over 6 direction. That's going to put me right there. Now, perhaps we could do more points, but I hope by now you've got a feel for what's happening. And let's see. What the graph is doing is it's starting right here. It's moving this way. And ends right there. We have a beautiful circle. So r equals sine of theta is a circle with a radius of one half and a diameter of one. And basically, here's what I want you to know, is it only takes pi radians to complete that circle. All right. If I went from pi to 2 pi, what it would do is it would retrace the circle I already have on my paper. It would retrace that circle. So that's really important to know that it only takes 0 to pi radians to complete that circle because what's going to happen is we're going to start the, they're going to ask me to find the area of that circle. And when we want the area, all we're going to do is integrate from 0 to pi. Those are going to be the bounds. Okay, that's going to turn out to be the area because the circle starts at theta equals zero and it ends at theta equals pi. Sometimes a common mistake is that we like to integrate from zero to two pi. And that's actually going to give you double the area of that circle because what it's going to do is it's going to go around the horn twice. So we want to make sure we know how many radians it takes to finish a circle. All right, number two, let's start with a fresh piece of graph paper. We're going to talk about how y equals the cosine of x in rectangular form corresponds to r equals the cosine of theta in polar form and how we can use that to our advantage. So let's see, cosine 
is going to hit these major points right there. And just, again, good time to practice your concavity and so forth as you sketch your cosine graph. And I'm going to pick out a few of the major points. Uh, for instance, let's start right here, the ordered pair is 0, 1. Now remember that x value corresponds to theta. Just remember this, x corresponds to theta, and then your y value corresponds to the r value. So that 1 that we see is your r, theta, comma, r. Which, okay, and this is a little shaky because when we really talk about polars, it's always been r, comma, theta, and that's not changing. I'm just drawing a correlation between how this rectangular graph corresponds to the polar graph. So I need to plot zero, uh, let's see, zero is my theta, my r is a one, and again, I'm gonna use two circles to represent um, one unit, that's just a scaling thing. Um, then we've got pi over two comma zero. So that's actually gonna put me, did I, oh my goodness gracious, I wanna erase that first point. Hopefully you're sitting at home wondering where in God's green earth that came from. My first dot should have been right there. That's the zero one point. And then I'm gonna do pi over two, but has a R of zero, so that just leaves it at the pole. And then this one right here, pi comma negative one, what I'm doing is I'm going to go in the pi direction here, but because the r value is negative 1, it's going to shoot me back here, and I'm going to duplicate that first point I had. All right? So again, what we're seeing here, just like the sine curve, the cosine curve, it only takes it pi radians, okay, we'll say right there's the cutoff, it only takes pi radians to finish that first cycle. If you wanted some more specific points, we could talk about 60 and we could talk about 120 right here, all right? We know that when the angle's pi over three, the radius is one half, okay? So there's your theta, there's your r. We could plot that point. Let's see, pi over three, one half right there. And then this other angle, uh, this one right here would be, is that 2 pi over 3? That's 120 degrees, right? Okay, comma 1 half. Now, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to find 2 pi over 3, but then I need to go in the negative direction because I forgot to put my negative there. But I'm going to shoot this way 1 half unit and get a dot right around there. And hopefully you can see that circle start to develop. Now, they may ask you where it starts. The circle starts right here, and then it rotates this way and finishes right there. So that's actually a little nicer circle than I usually draw, a little more symmetric. Um, so anyway, uh, again, it takes only zero to pi radians to graph the first circle. If we went from pi to two pi, we would be retracing the circle, and that's just a waste of time, effort, and energy. Um, what else should we talk about? Um, let's see, circles in general. Let's talk about circles in general with regards to polars, okay? Anything that says r equals a times the sine of theta or anything that says r equals a times the cosine of theta is going to be a circle. Um, this, as a gets bigger, Okay, it just means the circle's diameter gets bigger. So A has a direct effect on the diameter. In fact, A does equal the diameter. The one, the two examples we've already done had an A value of one and therefore the diameter is one. The ones with sine in them will be symmetric with respect to the, what we used to call the Y axis. Okay, and the cosine ones, they'll be symmetric with what we used to call the X-axis. Okay, and that should hold true on all of these, whether they're circles or limicons or whatever the case may be. All right, now that we got our circles out of the way, those boring circles, we're ready to tackle something really exciting. And we're going to jump right in just because I can't wait. I'm so excited to talk about them. We want to jump in and do our limicons with an inner loop, okay? So we've got a limicon with an inner loop, okay? I think these are the most exciting ones going forward as we... Uh, talk about area and arc length and all that crazy stuff. Um, the first one I want to talk about is y equals 1 plus 2 sine of x. And we'll talk about how that corresponds to r equals 1 plus 2 times the sine of theta. All right. Now, how do you graph this trig function? A um, couple of basic things. Let's jump in our math time machine and go back to algebra 2. The, the 2 you see right here, that is what we call your amplitude. And that affects how tall the curve is. Um, and then the one over here, that's the vertical shift. Okay, so I want you to try to close your eyes and imagine a sine curve that, um, you know, has a height of two and a depth of negative two. And then just take that graph, lock it in as it is, and slide it or drag it up 
one unit, okay? Now the tallest point would be at three, and the lowest point would be at negative one, all right? And that's what we're going to try to draw here. Now, usually what I'll do is I draw a very, very faint line, a dotted line where the vertical shift is, okay? So right around here, I try to draw a very faint line at y equals 1 because that's the vertical shift. And what I do is I just kind of, I, I remind myself of where pi over 2 and pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi where I remind myself of those. Now for all intents and purposes, I'm going to pretend that that new dotted line is my x-axis. Okay, I know that my sine curve usually started at the origin. It peaked at pi over 2, so I'm going to go 2 units above it. It uh, has a root at pi. It bottoms out at 3 pi over 2. And again, notice I went 2 units below the blue dotted line. And then again, it has a root at 2 pi. And then I'm just going to draw the smoothest curve I can. And that's how I draw 1 plus 2 sine of x. So a little bit of review from Algebra 2 a couple years ago. Uh, we incorporated a vertical shift and an amplitude, which made it a little more exciting. And this time, it is gonna, we are going to use um, all the radians from 0 to 2 pi. We're not going to stop at pi like we did with the circle. And, uh, but anyway, let's see if we can get started here. What color should I use? Eh, let's go with orange. Okay, so the first ordered pair here is, let's see, 0 comma 1. So the, the x coordinate corresponds to my theta, and the y value is my r. So I'm going to go 0 degrees and 1 unit. Let's see. Yes, that would put me right here. Okay, now I'm going to keep switching colors maybe so we can see which point corresponds to which point. My pi over 2... Let's see, that's pi over 2 for a theta and a r value of 3. So I need to go up. Do I have enough space here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I need to spill off. Let's pretend that 3 is up here. That would be the sixth ring because every two rings represents one unit. All right, so, so my 3 is up here, and that's my pi over 2. Uh, switching colors again. How about this bear right here? Pi comma 1. So I got pi in one unit, which would put me right here. Um, let's see, what else do we got? I'm running out of colors. Um, let's see, this is 3 pi over 2, but it's negative 1, so it's going to shoot me this way, and thus, thus you can see the inner loop beginning to form. And then we'll finish with 2 pi here, 2 pi comma 1, which is actually going to end up duplicating the first dot we did, which with the orange, so the brown and the orange overlap. Now, four points by itself isn't a whole lot to get us started with the first one. Now, a week from now, you'll be able to draw this, you know, very fluently without any extra work. But there's a few other things we're missing. Um, and, boy, I'm not sure how many we should do. Probably the more the better is probably the philosophy we should have. But you see these roots right here? These roots are crazy important. Okay, those roots, and all we're going to do is we're going to take your function, we're going to set it equal to zero, and we're going to say, when does the sine curve equal negative one half? Well, hopefully you instantly said 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So those are my roots, and those are the moments where I'm going to hit the pole. So here's a big time note in your notebook. Tell yourself, every time I have an x-intercept on my rectangular graph, that corresponds to a point on the pole, okay? And the pole is a fancy word that the polars use for origin, all right? Um, let's see. Everything here that's below the x-axis corresponds to the inner loop I'm going to create. So I'm going to go ahead and start to draw this picture. We started here. We're going to swing this way. We're going to swoop down. We're going to go through the purple point. We're going to drop down, but come back, hit the pole. That's right there at that moment. I'm at 7 pi over 6, okay? Now I'm going to swoop up here. I'm going to hit the red one, swoop back. Now, right now, at this moment, it's 11 pi over 6. And I'll swoop back under and hit that orange dot. So I think it's very important to appreciate the order, the sequence in which we plotted those points. Make sure, let's see if I can switch colors here. Make sure you get underneath the x-axis for a little bit. 
Okay, and again here, make sure you get underneath the x-axis a little bit. And again, this little part of the rectangular graph corresponds to this inner loop right here. Um, what else should we say? This is going to be a really popular one because they're going to have us finding like the area of the inner loop or the arc length of the inner loop. Those are lots of fun questions that the AP likes to hit. All right, we're going to take a look at another Limicon with the inner loop. And we're going to talk about 1 plus 2 cosine of x and how that corresponds to r equals 1 plus 2 cosine of theta. Uh, again, just to reiterate how we're going to attack this, we're going to have a very faint line at 1 because that represents the vertical shift. All right. And then what we've got is I'm going to just remind myself where pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi are. And I'm going to basically pretend that that new dotted line is my x-axis. Um, I've got a cosine curve with an amplitude of 2. So uh, from that dotted line, I'm going to go up two units, and I'm going to start right there at 3. Um, let's see, I need a little darker line. Okay, so we're going to start right there at 3. And then, let's see, I've got a root at pi over 2. Well, it used to be a root. Now it's at 1. And then it bottoms out at pi. So I go two units below the dotted line. And then at 3 pi over 2, I hit the dotted line, which I'm for now I'm pretending is the x-axis. And then at 2 pi, I reach a max. And so we'll connect that nice curve. And we get something like this. Again, we're going to use every point available. And uh, that first point is 0, 3. So I've got, let's see, um, an angle of 0 degrees and a radius of 3. And you know what? I'm going to try, oh goodness, I need to erase that. Okay, let's see. I'm going to try to slide, the, oh, that screws that up. Oh, booger. Okay, well, here's the best we can do. Let's put 3 way over here. All right, I'm gonna, I should be going off the screen a little bit further. We'll do the best we can. That should be six rings. Um, then we'll hit this point right here. Let's go to pi over two. That's pi over two for theta and a one for r. And that's gonna put me, let's see, two circles right there. Switch colors. Okay, pi comma negative one. So I'm thinking pi, but I need to go backwards. So that's gonna throw me right there. And da, 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 da. let's see what color haven't we used. Uh, let's see, three pi over two comma one is going to put me right here. Let's spice it up a little bit. What other colors? Maybe I'll try yellow. Two pi comma three. That's going to put me right back at the orange guy. Now, a couple other things that are important. Do you see these two x intercepts right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your function one plus two cosine of theta, or x I should say. Set it equal to zero. I got to get rid of yellow. I can't even read that. Um, which means that the cosine of x should equal negative one-half. So hopefully you're thinking reference angle of 60 degrees, which means 2 pi over 3 and, let's see, that should be a 3, and 4 pi over 3 for second and third quadrant. So th that root right there is 2 pi over 3. And this root over here is 4 pi over 3. And we emphasize on that last video, and this is hopefully in your notes already, every time that the rectangular graph has an x-intercept, then that means the polar graph is going to touch and go through the uh, pole. So let's see, as we start to trace this, we're going to start right here. We're going to swoop up. We're going to come down. We're going to dip below the x-axis. And right there, when I hit that pole right now, it's 2 pi over 3. I'm going to swoop in, create my inner loop. When I exit the inner loop, I'm at 4 pi over 3. Swoop down and connect it. Now, uh, I drew kind of a fat curve here, so maybe, maybe I shouldn't have extended out so far. Maybe something like that. But you get the picture. We've got our inner loop. The inner loop started at 2 pi over 3, and the inner loop ended at 4 pi over 3. And I want to go ahead. I think that's worth writing down in our notebook here. The inner loop. Because the inner loop is so important. Um, it started at 2 pi over 3. And it ended at 4 pi over 3. And that's really helpful because if they later on, if they want the area of that inner loop, we're going to write an integral that starts at 2 pi over 3 and ends at 4 pi over 3. So that's really important for the area of the inner loop. Well, I hope that helps. I hope that gets you started. Tomorrow night, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about roses. We're going to talk about limicons with just a little dimple or a sharp point there at the pole. But um, a few other varieties we've got to hit before we move on and start tackling the calculus elements of polar. So good luck and I'll see you tomorrow.